And uh, we're going to kind of talk about uh, some of the top five spots in uh, Vegas that people should go to right now if you're if you're willing to uh, do the splurge or have a special occasion. Uh, anniversaries are always great. Uh, birthdays. Um, Bailey, uh, if you don't mind kind of going through your your current top five. Yeah, I mean, I would, I'm very curious to hear yours as well. I want to see how, how much they match up. Right, um, okay. Would it be... Let's in, go for number five first. Number five. Number five, I would say Kame Omakase. I have to that is my one. number five. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. It's excellent. They have good ingredients. I think that Chef takes you on his interpretation of what he finds fresh. And, you know, I think it's, it's a great place. I've always had a great time there. Um, even during the shutdown, they had great, you know, a great takeaway menu um, that didn't take away from the quality. So I thought that was excellent. Man, yeah, it, and uh, the new space on Spring Mountain's great. It definitely caters towards a lot of uh, tourists on the Strip because it's super close. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, it, it's interesting that uh, recently uh, they their omakase price is now three fifty per person. Oh wow! Yeah, and uh, I haven't been back since it's been that price. But from all I hear, it's still amazing. Um, mm -hmm. Phil Ivy the famous professional poker player said it was the best sushi in North America. Wow. So I think it's going to be uh, pretty crowded when World Series of Poker starts uh, at the end of the month. Man, the secret's out. <laughs> yeah, secret's out. But yeah, Chef Eric's amazing. And it's interesting. Chef Eric is actually not Japanese. Uh, mm -hmm. He's Korean. Correct. Yeah. And it really, uh, you know, there is a stigma uh, for a lot of the sushi snobs that he wasn't Korean, uh, wasn't Japanese in the beginning. But I think uh, the perception has completely changed. It doesn't even matter anymore. He's just right. I don't amazing. think either. Yeah, yeah. When was the last time you were there? Um, it was probably last year, like right after they reopened. Um, we went. Um, I think I went with Suki and Daniel and a few other people, and it was awesome. He always comes out with great dishes and surprise dishes. You know. Yeah, yeah. I remember that he grilled a bunch of king crab and a bunch of other stuff. I was, uh, I was a little jealous. <laughs> and, and he bust out the caviar, man. Yeah, yeah. Can't go wrong with that. Okay, so moving on to number four. What is, uh, what is Bailey Z eats number Ooh, four? Number four, I would say. I was. It was tough between number four and number three, but I, I'm gonna have to say Jose Andre E. That's my number four too. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> Man. That's great. Okay. We have great minds to think alike. So I, I think yeah. it was, it's a, so this is where dining is changed. I think that it's turned now from not just a meal and a food and now it's turned into a show. Right. Yeah. So I think it's very extravagant. They kind of, it's, it's more so to kind of wow you and not all the food is necessarily, I mean, they taste good, but it's not necessarily meant to, be like, this is tasty, but this is to kind of blow you away in terms of how they present it. Yeah, I think uh, A by Jose Andres is really the modern version of Willy Wonka in, mm -hmm. in town. And uh, for those that don't know, it's around a 20-ish course dinner that uh, you do have to reserve uh, probably 90 days in advance at the minimum. And you do prepay. Uh, and right now, I think it's around 385 per person. Right. So... Um, but yeah, I mean, that's a great number four, uh, it's a free intimate space and only seats with maybe eight to 10, eight to 10. Yeah. That's yeah. It. Maybe with COVID maybe six only. Right. And, and you uh, buy a golden ticket, I think, right. You get a ticket before. Yep. You yeah. get a golden ticket before speaking of Willy Wonka. So they, 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 they feel that way too. Mm -hmm. And, uh, one was the last time you were at a, oh, that's, that's probably a couple of years ago. I haven't gone there in a while. I think those are, that kind of meal is is just something special because it's so expensive and a lot of those kind of meals are you're not meant to go there to fill up you know it's just there right. to experience something and celebrate something so i don't go there too often yeah yeah i've been uh, fortunate to go uh four times mm -hmm. um two, two for anniversaries one was a wedding uh wedding reception <laughs> mm -hmm. for 10 and then uh was a group dinner with a bunch of the ig foodies and and yeah a few of them did go to district donuts after because <laughs> oh, uh, they were still hungry yeah. but and then uh and i do remember uh making the mistake of letting the sommelier just pick whatever wine they wanted to for my pairing mm -hmm. 
that came out to around 60 a glass, but it was, uh, it was pretty awesome. Yeah. So nice. Yeah. And then also, I mean, Haleo is great as well. Um, for those that, that can't spend that much. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I love everything Jose Andres. So let's go to number three. Okay. Let's see if this matches up. Uh, this would be amazing Partage. if it matches up. Huh? Partage. Partage? Oh, Partage is not on my top five. Not in your top. Okay, okay. It was number, I was going to, it's lurking around six. Oh, okay, okay. I'm say. But for me, I do, I do love that pick. For me, I, I think that it's, it's, it's fine dining, but it's very approachable. Um, it's very unassuming. They do a great job of, you know, doing their dining space in Chinatown, no less, right? You don't think of a fine dining spot in that area. Um, and every meal is always great. And they're always innovating. They're always changing up their menu. Um, and the biggest thing is it's affordable. Like it's yeah. one of the most affordable fine dining restaurants in town. And I'm convinced that if Michelin stars were still here, it would at least be a one star at the very least. So, yeah, I agree. It's uh, it's very approachable. They currently offer a five, seven, and nine course dinner. Uh, they mm -hmm. actually got rid of the three course, and the five course is eighty bucks or eighty five bucks now. So you can't beat that. Yeah, can't beat that. Uh, seven course is around one hundred and ten, and then nine course they add, they can throw in a, a foie gras course, and I think I think an oxtail croque monsieur uh, mm -hmm. course. So yeah. And it's great bang for buck, and the wine pairings are awesome too. So yeah. that's a good choice. Uh, when was the last time you were at Partage? Um, it might have been with you. Um, okay. Time when they did the the rose three D printed cheese course, which is great. Uh, I mean, I, I enjoyed the cheese course before, but the way they did it now is very innovative. I don't, I haven't seen three D printed food anywhere else yet. Anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm surprised. Uh, I, I mean, not other uh, other restaurants haven't latched onto that yet, but it's been a big hit for them. Uh, I know it's brought in a lot of people. We had that dinner with Roe and Jay the Ruler. Was it? Uh, was this? It might have been. Yeah, it might have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But so, I've been there multiple times. I mean, we go for birthdays. We we've had a a, a small wedding there in the um, private dining room. Um, so we go there all the time. It's great. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's great. Okay, uh, number two. Number two, I would say uh, Guy Savoie. <laughs> That's my number two. <laughs> Is it really? Okay, yeah. so three three out of four so far. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Um, we went there uh, right after um, shutdown reopened. Um, and I was very uh, nervous because a lot of the fine dining restaurants were closing and I was worried that things would not reopen again, right? Um, that was concerns, and I'd never been there, and I never went to the one in France because I'm like, well, we have one in here, in town. So we ended up going, it was great. Um, the only thing I would say is that, you know, the bread cart was a little bit lacking because usually pre-pandemic, they would, you know, roll the bread cart, you could pick whatever you want, and they no longer did that. But it was still a great, great menu, um, great tasting menu. How do they do the bread tape bread cart then? Um, they roll a, the bread cart to you, um, and then you there they have different selections, and then you pick. But then they go back, and I guess they it's they just pick it from the back. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. interesting. So yeah, we went uh, Christmas Eve, and they actually did slice it at the at the table, but. Okay. But, and then actually going back to, I wanted to go back to something that you had mentioned before with fine dining requiring a, I mean, a tasting menu versus just an a la carte experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, did you, like, I wanted to actually go a la carte, I, actually yeah. after seeing your posts. Right. Um, did, and that's the way, that's the route you took instead, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So also a lot of times, uh, you know, tasting menus when we eat, with me and my wife are, can be redundant because you get the same dishes. So a lot of times what we like to do is if there's a tasting menu and you get to pick and choose um, like out of three things, we'll pick and choose different things. But if the tasting menu is too similar, we'll go a la carte or one person will go tasting and the other person will go a la carte if they allow it. Usually, sometimes they don't do that. 
Yeah. Um, just because the courses won't match up in terms of the number. Um, but we like to share everything and try different things. So that's the, the best way of trying everything. Totally. And I, I totally agree. We, I wanted to go a la carte as well, but uh, Christmas Eve, they only offer the tasting menu, which was still fantastic, but yeah, it gets redundant, uh, especially with the two of us. So, right. yeah, but I definitely want to go back soon and, and, and do an a la carte experience next time. But a uh, good call on number two. I think we can predict number one. Oh, I think we know. <laughs> uh, Joel Rubichon. The man, yeah. the myth, Joel Rubichon. Yeah. Yes. I mean, yeah. since I came here, I'm like, man, one day I want to go there. And we ended up going for my birthday one year. And it was, I mean, beautiful dining room, excellent service. The food was great couldn't complain about anything. I mean, I wish we still had, they still had the limo service or the car service. That was the best. I heard back in the day, they, they picked you up from your house and there was a yep. secret entrance and then they dropped you back off, which is amazing, right? It was amazing. Yeah. 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 The first time we went was our fourth wedding anniversary and we were still living in a shitty apartment in Decatur and Flamingo. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, this gold limo rolls up <laughs> and, uh, and we come down and yeah, they walk you through the mansion uh, to get in, which was really cool. And then, yeah, they take you back. So, why do you stand? I can't imagine how much it would be abused now. Oh, for um, sure. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. And then um, I am actually looking to go pretty soon. I know I'm, I'm, I've been trying to make a reservation. It's been, it's been quite tough. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I don't know. Maybe we can all just go. I am down. Left, hurrah. I am down. <laughs> <laughs> three weeks it has to be within three weeks, but yes. Okay. All right. I, I'll check the, I'll check the reservations. Um, have you been to L'Atelier? You, I think you have, right? Yes, I have. Yes. Yeah. We went for Christmas one year. Um, also, you know, it's very similar to Partage in terms of the price point. Um, not, I mean, it's fancy, but it's not like, you know, their main Joel Rubichon fancy. Um, but it was great. They, they had another thing, fine dining restaurants, typically do also is they have, you know, table side service for a lot of stuff. They will break down a fish table side, which I love seeing. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. Um, the only reason I didn't pick that as my number three is probably just because, is it open yet? I don't even know if it's back open. Latelier is back open. Is it back open? Okay. Yeah. Because if, just if you were saying places that you can go currently, and I wish, you know, again, like all those places we tried just because we were afraid that they wouldn't reopen. And one of my, the favorite places that I wish would reopen is Le Cirque. I think that's super underrated. Um, it would definitely be in my top five if it was open again, but it's not. Yeah. You know, Le Cirque is a great call. Um, I mean, I've only been there once um, mm -hmm. and had a great dinner. It was, I think, Valentine's Day like years ago. Um, but yeah, excellent choice. And then Twist as well would be another honorable mention. Of a, of a restaurant that hasn't been open and that might've made the top five. Right. And I, that's one I haven't been to. So I wish right. I did. if I did and if it was open, maybe it would be, but who knows? Yeah. Um, so the only other difference in number three, uh, sorry, Partage, uh, it was, um, I chose Bizarre Meat. I think wow. uh, a steakhouse needed to be on there and they offer a lot of atypical cuts and I love the atmosphere, the Hannibal-esque uh, mm -hmm. atmosphere with the blood dripping from the ceiling and all that. And uh, it's just one of my one of my favorite places for a group dinner. Yeah, it's an excellent choice. And I was debating about that too. I was debating about, do steakhouses count as fine dining? I don't know. I'm not sure. Do they usually have a tasting menu? Generally not. Generally all the sides you have to order separately as well, right? Right. Um, so that's, I guess that's, that's a different topic, um, steakhouses. I mean, they offer a tasting menu at Bazaar, but I mean, I usually just uh, glance over it and put it to the side. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I know it's been a, a controversial topic recently with a, a lot of restaurants where the clientele has, not, has been showing up in, in not so uh, formal attire, uh, fine mm -hmm. dining attire. And um, specifically with steakhouses, because I think a lot of people don't view uh, steakhouses fine dining, fine dining perhaps, because it is technically just steak and potatoes. Mm 